Greetings, fellow cyber dogs and fellow minecrafters and fellow mine squatches all over the world. This is Delacaba with Delacaba Presents. Let's play Minecraft, the Squatchcraft TFC2 mod pack. Um, I have finished developing this mod pack and did a long beta playthrough just to make darn sure that everything is working well. And by golly, it does appear to be doing so. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take us outside of the game for a moment so that I can show you guys what mods there are installed in this mod pack, and then we will come back to game. So I'll be right back. All right, my friends, I am back, and what we're going to do is just really quickly, we're going to go through the mod list here and show you guys the mods that we have here in this mod pack. So the first thing, of course, is we've got Terra Firmacraft, and um, that is, of course, the foundation of this entire mod pack experience. But So we've got Minecraft Forge, of course, and we've got Terra Firmacraft. We also have not enough items. NEI is here as well as, as the specialized stuff for Terra Firmacraft for NEI. Now you'll notice that the next one here says Psychedelic Craft Core. And I do want to tell you that Psychedelic Craft is one of the mods that is installed here in this mod pack. But I also want to tell you that none of the stuff in the Psychedelic Craft mod is available in-game. None, none of the plants grow None of the recipes work. None of that stuff. There's only one reason that Psychedelic Craft is in this particular mod pack. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is, is because in Psychedelic Craft, there is tobacco. And so by way of Psychedelic Craft, um, Mind Tweaker, and my own small mod that I've created called N Rustica, it allows me in game to produce rustic tobacco. N Rustica is rustic tobacco because I'm a pipe maker for a living and tobacco is a very part a very important part not only of my life but also of the culture of the United States and our history as well as the native peoples of North and South America. If you don't care for this, if you don't want to be involved with tobacco or any of the psychedelic craft stuff, it's very easy to just go right into the mods folder just delete the psychedelic craft mod and go to the config folder and delete the psychedelic craft config and it will be gone or you can just go and delete the n rustica mod and it will remove the n rustica mod and tobacco will no longer be available but moving on we have the damage indicators mod we also have the uh, uh tfc decorations mod we have the TFC Leather Water Sack mod. We have Terra Miscellaneous, which adds in some new weapons like a halberd and poniard and a uh, longbow, as well as some chainmail armor and some other really excellent content. We have the Cellars add-on, which allows us to build a root cellar, which is absolutely fantastic. We also have the Terra Firma Craft Scales mod, which allows us to make a set of scales and the weights to go with them, and that allows us to very carefully measure out the correct amounts of um, minerals to make specific mixes of bronze and stuff. We have Bibliocraft as well as the Bibliowoods TFC, which means we can take the Bibliocraft recipes and we can make them using um, Terra Firma Craft materials. We have Dynamic Lights, all right, as well as having Fast Craft and Farseek to help with uh, the speed of this mod. We have Journey Map so that we can map our journey. Mind Tweaker so that uh, I can add in nine custom recipes. We have the Plant Mega Pack, which gives us just an amazing number of, of plants. And this, many of the custom recipes that I've added in are specifically to make use of some of the plants from the Plant Mega Pack. There's also the End Rustica mod, which is my own little mod that I made that allows me to have my rustic tobacco. And we also have skin port which allows us to use our minecraft 1.8 skins here in minecraft 1.7 so all, all that hard work you put into putting all those extra bits onto your onto your skin in minecraft 1.8 you'll have your full skin here in 1.7 we've also got the streams mod which gives us actual flowing rivers and then we've got the NEI plugin for Terraforma Craft and Wyla, which is what am I looking at? And so that is the mod list going on here, and we are going to get back in the game. Now, the seat for the map that I'm going to be playing is right here. It is Squatchcraft TFC2, and you can see that the S on Squatchcraft, as well as the TFC, 
are all capitalized. So let's play Selected World and let's get started. All right, now um, you can see I've got my extra parts on my arms and, and the backs of my hands and stuff that I would have if I was playing with my 1.8 skin. So it's pretty neato. But here we are in our starting spot and other than Minecraft, high five, whoosh, with a squatch fist in your face, we're going to get started. And I have no idea what we got, but I'll tell you one thing. I am super happy, mega happy, to see all these pheasants. Because pheasants mean feathers, and feathers mean arrows, and bows and arrows are kind of an awesome thing to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out. If you have not played Terraforma Craft, you must come to realize immediately that Terraforma Craft is survival how it should have been it is a very believable representation of true survival meaning we are going to be starting out in the stone age you can see i'm picking stones up off the ground these happen to be quartzite which means the main stone in this area will also be quartzite we are going to want to also pick up sticks because sticks and stones and grass are how we're going to get started here in this world so we're going to take this stick and we're just going to wail on some of this brush here in the hope that we'll get more sticks because man are they important here early on we're going to need at least five sticks um, just for the most basic of things and we really should try to have ourselves about a dozen sticks if we can there's four and five I'm just kind of looking around as we go seeing if I'm spotting anything good now we've got some pigs here and we've also got some pheasants here Hello, pheasant. Oh, he's a little baby pheasant. Now, that's interesting. Okay, he's not going to do us any good. We can't eat him. Oh, oh, boy. I sure hope we find something else edible because if we can't go after those pheasants, we're, we're going to be in a little bit of deep trouble here. What do we got over here? Oh, yep. And that one's a baby too, I think up a little bit yep that is a baby pheasant as well wow okay so and that means the pigs are probably babies as well yep they're babies so normally terra firma craft has a 96 day year okay and we have all the seasons and everything as well as having gravity by the way you need to be aware of that oh we lucked out oh gosh we got so lucky look that is a cherry tree Ooh, okay, we will not go hungry. But um, normal normal Terra Firma Craft, I'm right-clicking these, by the way, to make them drop. Normal Terra Firma Craft has a 96-day year. What I've done just for myself, it's not done in the mod, but you can certainly do so, is I have made my day 360 days. So it's going to be an actual full year of 360 days as opposed to 365 because the game gets along better with the number 360 than 365. But let's take in... We're just going to shift click to get these cherries up into our crafting grid here. You can see it's only a partial crafting grid until we're able to accomplish some things. But what we want to do is we want to combine these together so that they take up less room and they will stack up. So there we go. So there is 82 ounces of cherries. There we go, 146 ounces of cherries. I'm going to leave the other cherries in the top of the tree so that, uh, oops, jump up and get that one that got hung up there. But having this cherry tree is a really, really good thing. Ooh, and this is a really good thing, too. These goldenrod flowers indicate that there is clay here. And that is a good thing to have at the beginning. So given the fact that we got food right there, do we have any fresh water in the neighborhood? Yes, see the cattails down there? That means that's fresh water. So we've got fresh water, we've got some basic food, and we've got some clay here. So it's time for us to make some tools so that, uh, oh, that's different. That's schist is the type of stone that is. All right, so with at least two stones in a stack, we're going to get to them on our hot bar and we're going to right click. And it's going to give us our stone napping interface. The first thing that I'm going to nap for myself is I'm going to make some knife blades. So I'm going to take and just click, and that's going to divide this right down the middle. And then I'm going to click the inside corners. You can also click the outside corners, but that's going to give us two stone knife blades. Okay? E to exit that, and then right-click again. And now I'm going to make an axe head. 
and I'm actually going to make two axe heads. So there's one. And I know I'm going through these very quickly, but we will take more time with these later on. It's just darkness comes really soon on the first night. And one thing you need to know is that the mobs in this game are horrifying. Okay? Yes, they're just skeletons and spiders in the standard Minecraft mobs, but the amount of damage they do and their actual um, hit points are just horrifying. Okay? So I'm going to take two sticks. I'm going to set them at an angle like that, and that's going to create a fire starter. Alright? That's very important. I'm going to put together our knife. Just one at this moment. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to cut grass. I'm just left-clicking the grass, and you'll see it's giving us these little pieces of straw. And we need some of those because... Oh, there we go. That is minerals right there. Small spare light. That's minerals we'll use eventually, but we're just going to make sure and cut ourselves some grass. There's more spare light there. That's good. Yep, there's spare light all over the place. Ah, more sticks. Now, we're going to put together our axe, our two axes, as a matter of fact. And we are going to make use of them by cutting down one of these sequoia trees. And it, and um, the uh, tree capitator mod is definitely part of the overall terra firma craft mod. And so we're probably going to have to use up two axes to cut this sequoia, but it's going to give us a huge amount of wood, and that's really going to be to our advantage. There we go. You can see just one, one log drop there, but the second axe should finish the tree off. Come on. No, it didn't. Holy cow, this must be a really huge sequoia. All right, well, I'm going to put my shovel together. You see it's only one stick. We don't need two sticks to make a shovel. So there's our shovel. And... How many sticks do I have? That leaves me three sticks. I've got to have those three sticks. So let's take our shovel. And let's come on over here to where the clay is. Now, dirt and gravel both have gravity affecting them in this mod pack. All right. So clay is one of the few materials that doesn't have the gravity effect. And so that's why it's great to have found clay, because it should allow us to dig in and make a a home that we can actually dig in and it's not going to collapse on our head here. We got gravel underneath, so we lucked out. The clay is deep enough here to do this. So I am going to make sure... Okay, right here, so next one over. I'm just going to take and dig us out a nice space real quick because it's going to get dark really soon. And we need to get this space dug out, and we need to drink some water because we have both hunger and thirst in the Terra Firma Craft mod. But having this clay is magnificent because it really is one of the first steps towards truly advancing our situation. All right. So after I've dug this out, I'm going to dig a hole in the corner here. The hole is not necessary. It's just my personal preference. I'm going to go to my sticks. And I'm going to use Q to throw three sticks into that hole, plus one piece of thatch. I'm going to go to my fire starter, and I'm going to right-click, and that's going to create a fire for us. I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to take and drop a couple of these sequoia logs in here. All right, so now we've got... Oops, hello, please do your job. Thank you. There we go. So that's going to keep our fire going for a minute, because we need at least one more stick. Now, if we need to, we can take and we can um, smash a log to try to get a, a stick. Uh, oh, there's one right there. Come on, we need a come here stick. Okay, let's get back into our little hidey hole. And before the fire goes out, we're going to take that stick and we're going to drop it in the top here. And that's going to give us two torches. There we go. So now we've got some light careful the fire will burn you so we're gonna get these torches up and now we're gonna take our straw and we're going to take and get that straw in a in a square 
and that's going to create thatch blocks. All right? And we're just going to grab these thatch blocks, and we're going to use two of them to put right here at our entrance. Now, the thing to know about thatch blocks is thatch blocks are not solid. You can walk right through them, and so can mobs. All right? But they will block the line of sight of the mobs, and as long as a mob doesn't see you go through a thatch block, it, it's as effective as any other solid block to keep them from seeing us. Okay? So now that we are in here and we're relatively safe, we're going to eat some of our cherries. Our green bar is our hunger. Our blue bar is our thirst. So we're going to munch some of these cherries here. There we go. What do we got here? 15 ounces there and 136 ounces there. Let's combine those together just so they take up less room. But we can always recover our thatch blocks back into thatch by just putting them in our crafting grid. And you can see our crafting grid is only four spaces. Another important thing to know is that we have a back slot that's right there. So for real heavy things like barrels of water and anvils and things like that, we have to carry them on our back. That's also where our quiver will go if we ever get a quiver made. But in order to expand our full crafting grid, we have to be able to use a saw to turn raw logs into planks and then those planks into plank blocks and then make a crafting table. And that crafting table, when we click it, will open up the rest of our grid. So until we've got the copper or the bronze to make a saw, this is all the bigger our crafting grid is and it makes life complicated. But we have lots of clay and that is a beautiful, beautiful thing for us right now. Okay? But we do need to do a couple of things, and, and the first is we need to get some clay items made. If you get the clay in your right hand, it takes at least five balls of clay, and right-click, it's going to give us a 5x5 five five grid, just like it did with the stone. And one of the first things that we're going to definitely want to make is we're going to want to make a water jug. To do that, we're going to start at the top left corner, and we're going to click it, and you'll see it removes some of the clay. So we're going to go one skip one, one, two, three, then going downwards, one, skip one, one, two, three, and then we're going to punch out this one right here to the left of our little tab there, All right? And that's going to give us a clay jug. Now this clay jug must be fired in order to be usable, so we're going to have to dig a pit and actually fire it in a pit. Ooh, we've got a skeleton out there. Got a couple of skeletons. Look at all the mobs. Oh my gosh. Now, the longer you spend in a, in a location, the more spawn protection you get. And so the longer I'm here, the l fewer and fewer mobs will spawn right near us. But I can tell you, if we stay in this location, we're going to be cutting down a lot of trees right around us because, of course, those mobs will hide under those trees when the sun comes up. But I think we should be okay here in our hidey hole. So let's uh, right-click on the clay again. And we're going to make a second water jug. So one, skip one, one, two, three. One, skip one, one, two, three. And pop out that guy right there. And there's the second water jug. Now the next thing I'm going to be making is I'm going to be making a small pottery jar that will allow us to store some materials in it. It'll also allow us to melt ores if we find ores. And you can see that's just knock out the four corners and that gives us a clay vessel. Food stored in a clay vessel decays at only half the rate of food that's on our person or stored in another method. Ooh, he's close out there. He's right above us, as a matter of fact. Right up there. But now we're going to take and we're going to remove the center three blocks all the way down until all we've got left is just this outline here. And that's going to create a large vessel. Oh no, he's inside. Oh, and I'm... Ah, get out, get out, get out. Run. This is not good. We are in deep trouble now. Head for the water. How did... Oh man, he found his way in. Get away from me. Uh... Woohoo. We got excitement now. We're going into the water and we're swimming out. And I guess I know where I'm spending the night. Son of a gun. Hopefully he followed us out, because if he's still inside our, our little hidey hole, we're in deep trouble. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Woo. That'll wake you up. 
the zombies will try to pursue us out into the water here, but hopefully, oh, we actually, we got to get away from that right there. Because they may spawn there. But wow, yeah, that, that caught me by surprise. Normally, normally they don't find their way down in. That's the first time I've ever had that happen on the first night. And I have no idea. Let's see, where's the moon? We've got a fair ways until the sun comes up. Goodness. <laughs> anyway, um, what I was... Sorry about that, but my mic. Um, what I was creating there was a large storage vessel because we can store both water and solid items in large storage vessels made out of clay like that. Whew, okay. Calming down. Alright, well, I guess I'm stuck here in the water. So what I'm going to do is, I guess I'm going to end the video here, and I will see you guys in the next one. And we'll explain some more about clay and things like that, but first we'll have to go back to shore and see whether or not uh, that skeleton is still inside our home. If he is, hopefully we can bait him out into the open. I think he followed us out, though, because he did take a whack at us. But um, scary, scary. Now, you may have noticed that that skeleton had javelins instead of a bow and arrow. And there are white skeletons and black skeletons, and the white ones have bows, and the black ones have javelins, and it's scary stuff. But all right, guys, I'd give you a, a high five, but I'm kind of in, in the water here. <laughs> here, I guess the best I can do. There we go. There's a clay ball high five. All right, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm out. Peace.